Welcome to this edition of News Review on Press TV. Iran's ambassador to Vienna-based international organization says no separate document is needed to revive the 2015 Iran nuclear deal. In a series of tweets, Qasem Qaribabadi reiterated that the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action is not subject to renegotiation. It also said, under the accord, the International Atomic Energy Agency is tasked with only monitoring and verifying Iran's voluntary measures and not making assessments on how Tehran is implementing its commitments. He was responding to comments by IAEA chief Rafael Grossi, who argued the upcoming U.S. administration needs to strike a new deal with Iran due to the occurrence of what he called too many breaches. The U.S. withdrew from the JCPOA in 2018 and reimposed sanctions on Iran. Tehran, in return, announced a gradual scaleback of its commitment, citing the remaining signatories' failure to uphold their obligations. I'll be discussing this with a panel that joins me right now. Luckily, I've got my uh, hands on our correspondent, Vienna-based uh, Homa Lesgi. It's good to see you, Homa, long time no see. And uh, Tim Anderson, director with Center for Counter-Hegemonic Studies uh, via Skype out of Sydney. Uh, I'd like to begin with Vienna, obviously, and uh, get the words from out there uh, from Homa. Homa, what are you hearing on that? You know, it's very unlike an organization that does not necessarily need to oversee what is not in its jurisdiction. What do you hear on that? Yes, Arash, hello and good to see you as well. Now, uh, we have been seeing uh, Twitter posts from Iran's ambassador, Mr. Ghali Babadi, over the past few days. This is the, the latest that you mentioned here, his criticism of the remarks that were made in an interview by Rafael Mariano Grossi, the IAEA Director General. And previously, he'd also criticized the, uh, Mr. Grossi for making uh, similar remarks when it comes to uh, Iran's intentions uh, concerning its commitments based on the JCPOA. As you mentioned there, Mr. Ghali Bobadi has said uh, in his uh, series of tweets that the agency's role should purely be technical, not political. And this is something that the agency itself has said that it, it does comply with, that it views itself as a technical organization. And indeed, the task that the agency has when it comes to the JCPOA is based on the UN Security Council resolution that endorses this, this deal. This is a role that has been given to the IAEA following intense negotiations between the parties involved in signing that agreement. That role is a verification and monitoring of Iran's implementation of its commitments and then reporting that to the IAEA's Board of Governors, would, which would be the political entity that would make uh, any statements like these or any decisions or resolutions, etc. So it is uh, quite, uh, you know, uh, out of the responsibilities, we could say, of the IAEA to make these kinds of remarks. For instance, in an earlier interview, saying that, uh, Mr. Grossi saying that he believes that uh, Iran uh, would not win or gain anything from uh, throwing its inspectors out or from uh, increasing its current enrichment, etc., or most recently now what Mr. Khali Babadi referred to his most recent comments concerning uh, a re renegotiation of the nuclear deal, a very sensitive topic for Iran because uh, Iranian officials have said time and again that they have no intention of renegotiating the JCPOA and all the measures that have, they have taken up until now they believe can be reversed. Now, there, there are, of course, criticism from especially the European signatories of the deal that say some of the measures that Iran has taken cannot be reversed, especially when it comes to research and development. But what Iran has said in response to that is that because Iran's benefits have not been realized, the balance has not been restored to the deal, and the Europeans have not lived up to their side of the commitments following the U.S. withdrawal, then Iran is entitled to take these measures and asking Iran to comply uh, to the, with its full commit to, co to come back to the deal fully without and knowing the fact that Iran does not have any benefits from the deal is both uh, impractical, Iran says, and also unreasonable. Tim Anderson, don't you think it's uh, somehow uh, interesting yet very surprising that uh, an honorable agency like the IAEA is? I mean, you know, after all, it's a, it's a, it's a UN agency. Uh, don't you think 
or, or do you find it surprising that its head is overstepping, or do you think he is overstepping? Stepping, Mr. Grossi, I'm not sure what got into his mind to suggest some new deal. I mean, these are very different times to now to when the whole process began. Let's remember back some years ago, China and Russia were joined with the Europeans and the US to put this sort of pressure on Iran. Now things are very different. Uh, China and Russia have totally different relationships. And as your previous commentator said, the US has walked out, walked away from the deal and the Europeans haven't lived up to the deal. So why Iran should be expected to go back, there's nothing in it for Iran, really. And the promises were all reneged on the first time. Why would Iran go back into another deal? It, it's extraordinary. And I don't know why Mr. Grossi thinks it's his place to uh, suggest some new pressure on Iran. Uh, Homa, that's the same question. I mean, why is it, uh, I know you're in Vienna and then perhaps, you know, through the back channels, uh, maybe there is something, maybe somebody is pulling his strings, you know, because I'm b quite myself baffled with this, that why should the head of IAEA make comments about this? Where do you think the relation under these circumstances, where do you think the relation between the IAEA and, and Iran is going, you know, in light of perhaps, you know, these comments that are not very re relevant. Up until this point, the level of cooperation between Iran and the agency has been at the highest because, as you know, the JCPOA envisages a vast inspection role for the IAEA in Iran, both uh, beyond basically the safeguards agreement that Iran has with the agency, which includes all IAEA member states, and also because it involves the additional protocol, because Iran is voluntarily implementing the additional protocol as part of its commitments under the JCPOA. So if there is no deal, then Iran won't be implementing the additional protocol. And that is what gives the agency access and increased access to any locations that it says it needs to visit in Iran. So, uh, so basically, according to Mr. Grossi himself and the previous Director General, uh, Yuki Amono, this is the most robust verification regime that the agency has in any country. But Iran has said that it can uh, make this decision to reduce the level of its cooperation with the agency if that, uh, you know, is needed to be done. That is an option that Iran is considering, although it has not acted on it yet. What's the significant here is the remarks that we heard from Mr. Ghali Babadi just a few days back, I think a week ago, when he cited an interview by the U.S. representative, uh, special representative for the case of the Iran, Elliot Abrams, and he said that uh, he had said, the U.S. representative had blatantly said that the European countries should increase pressure on the IAEA when it comes to its job on implement on monitoring the JCPOA in, in Iran and he did say that this is the type of pressure that the agency is facing from the United States that this is uh, as he put it in the words of the late director general Yukio Amano an effort to micromanage the agency and he did warn that uh, we should try and stop this pressure that's coming from external sources on the agency and affecting this cooperation between Iran and the IAEA. Looking at it with scrutiny, Tim Anderson, don't you think, you know, a lot of people might argue that this is another intimidation technique, try to persuade the Iranians, get back to the terms of the JCPOA and see everything as it was since day one, you know, not perhaps, you know, with the uh, lesser commitments that they had to do when the Europeans failed to hold their end of the bargain. Do you really think that such techniques, if it is a technique, do you really think it will yield? I can't see why uh, Mr. Grossi is, or how Mr. Grossi is going to place any additional pressure on Iran. I think what aggravated the Iranian side, we know we saw reactions from lawmakers, was the, the open murder of leading scientist Dr. Dr. Fakhrizadeh and the responses or non responses from the other members of this JCPOA. You know, I think that's particularly galling, and there were calls to withdraw completely from the agreement at that time. Maybe there's some sort of reaction going on there, but I can't see Mr. Grossi placing any particular pressure on Iran at this stage. And, you know, uh, Tim, perhaps, you know, when one makes such comments, you shouldn't really expect to get, uh, you know, a flag of friendship in return. Do you really think that the IAEA is, is, uh, can count on the Iranian uh, cooperation, you know, at least, you know, as friendly as, as they have been before? Well, there has to be limits, you know, and unfortunately we've seen before with the OPCW, you know, that some of these UN agencies or UN aligned agencies are uh, subject to pressure by the big powers and they're trying to please 
some people behind the scenes. Maybe that's what's going on here. Okay, Tim Anderson, director with Center for Counter-Hegemonic Studies out of Sydney, as well as Homo Lesgi, our correspondent in Vienna. It was uh, good to see you both. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, viewers, for staying tuned and watching this edition of News Review.